I am, so probably we should start our first session. So uh, I would like to welcome you warmly. Uh, as you probably noticed, uh, my name is Krzysztof Kalma. I work uh, in Szczecin, northwestern Poland, at the West Pomeranian University of Technology, at the Department of uh, Signal Processing and Multimedia Engineering. Uh, we will have four papers, as far as I know, one presenter is missing. Uh, so, probably 18 or maybe 20 minutes maximum for the presentation should be enough. Our first presenter will be Mr. Grzegorz Debita from Poland, uh, from Wroclaw, and the paper is entitled Quality Evaluation of Voice Transmission Using BPL Communication System in MV Mine Cable Networks. There are uh, one, two, three four, five, six authors, mm -hmm. yes. as you can see, from different uh, universities and institutes and, mm -hmm. and companies. So, please, the floor okay. is yours. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, for the great introduction. <coughs> uh, okay. Uh, 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 our, our work is about uh, our research is about the quality of experience, the voice transmission using a middle voltage cable in technology BP in BPL te technology <coughs> communication. And some outline there. There will be some introduction to the BPL PLC technology because BPL is the one of the part of the power line communication. Uh, something about underground environments because that uh, environment uh, is a different in, in, in a normal environment for example in propagation uh, something about the test <coughs> the quality evaluation uh, what type of the signal samples we are using what type of test coordinates the results and comments and some conclusion okay uh, BPL communication is the part of PLC, power line communication. Uh, that power line communication is consists of, of two technology. One technology is some uh, mm, low up to 100 uh, to 15 kilohertz <coughs> and uh, the high. That's, that means high. Uh, the frequency is not very high yes, because now we have a uh, trend, we have the very high frequency, gigahertz. Uh, we are used, uh, we are frequency between, uh, in, in this case, 2 to 7 megahertz, yes? uh, because we are using uh, the modems from the market. We, the, uh, this application is, uh, consists of to the elements when we can buy from the market now. That is not the optimized uh, device. Yes, we only uh, we only uh, we, we only uh, make the measure how 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 it will be if we, for example, using that technology to transmit the voice. And uh, in this technology, we have. We have very prob many problems. The problems is, for example, uh, with uh, analog parameters in analog domain. We have uh, many noises. We have uh, the problem with characteristic impedance in this area of frequency because it's not stable, and etc. and etc. For effective transmission in BPL, for example, using using the very very important is the decadal parameters, the attenuation, and the characters in impedance. And we are we are use the frequency for uh, for that experiment using two uh, the channel that is the channel two by seven megahertzes. Uh, because the producers uh, of the models uh, have that 
uh, frequency is to use. And that, that frequency uh, was optimal for this type of cable what we have. Because first we are make some mathematical model is to uh, to uh, show what is the propagation. Yes, I'm the author of this model uh, of, of this model. Yes? And from um, our calculation uh, is that uh, that frequency is optimal for that type of the cable. And uh, in this mining uh, in Kagita and Polska uh, that, uh, that is the block schema, uh, the point where we have the modems. Yes. First is the point A and B uh, in shaft yes, and underground. But we are, uh, from this paper, we are prepare the research between uh, two points, I and B, <coughs> in, in the mining in, uh, in the land 300 <coughs> meters. And what is, uh, what is the point? If this temperature is changed, the parameters of propagation inside this cable is changing too. <coughs> the characteristic impedance is, is changed, the noise is, is changed, and uh, we are make our uh, research of this type of parameters. Yes. Now, if we are going to that mining, yes, and we are uh, make the review, the temperature will be older, yes, and we have. Uh, we don't have the, the same results. Okay, w uh, we are uh, we are make our uh, research uh, in two cases. One is we are doesn't uh, uh, on the on that table is doesn't current and doesn't uh, uh, anything working. Yes. And it, another devices, and that is the situation where we can use that cable, for example, like a emergency uh, uh, emergency channel. Yes, when uh, we have some damage uh, underground. And the second point. Uh, we are uh, we are uh, have some uh, test bed when uh, we have the devices uh, is working uh, on that transmission line and we are using two uh, two type of the cowping because in uh, BPL technology we have the induction uh, coupler. And that coupler is instead. Uh, I show you on on the next picture yes, how it look like and how install it. Uh, the topology is point to point where we have the <coughs> uh, master gateway and the slave gateway uh, to prepare our uh, to, to prepare our experiment. We have computer where we have the installed, uh, installed uh, Linux operating systems and we have the DHCP server and there on this computer we have the tools, open source tools to uh, prepare a voice server and here in the shaft we have the m microcomputer like Raspberry Pi, that was Raspberry Pi and there, uh, there is uh, tool, um, th there is the informatic tools uh, which we can use uh, to prepare the communication between this computer and this microcomputer from point B to point A and then also from B to point uh, A, the samples. And another type of uh, calculation. 
we have collected the capacitive and induction uh, coupling test. Uh, we are, uh, and that is working too. We can, for example, ma uh, have, have the capacitive coupler and the uh, receiver have uh, using the induction coupler. And how it look like? That is the capacitive coupler, that, that is here. That is the far, uh, Faraday transformer, no, not a coupler. That is the Faraday transformer. That is the couplers, and that is the inductive coupler. That is the inductive coupler in point A. That is the capacitive cou uh, couplers of point A, and from point B, you see that is the inductive coupler is directly in this. And next. Okay, that is about tools. We are use uh, Ubuntu uh, in the last stable version. Uh, we are use iSky software uh, for the voice server and VLC software to have receiver. And we are prepared the dedicated scripts, the dedicated software yes, to uh, make the uh, uh, automatic voice transmission and the parameters is uh, the bit rate is from 8 to uh, 14 kilobits per second where we have the five different bit rates 8, 16, 24 and etc. Yes? And uh, that samples has took 10 minutes respectively. And now if when we make that uh, that experiment, yes, the second point is we find uh, the Przemek Falkowski from uh, from uh, Politechnika Gdańska uh, give 15 people uh, in age between 25 to 23 years old and. Uh, the, uh, they are to check the quality of experience yes, of that samples. And the signal samples. There was in three languages, British, English, German and Polish. Uh -huh. what, 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 uh, what is important? Uh, that samples uh, files is from the source from uh, ITU. Uh, that is the dedicated samples, for example, to testing uh, the telephones, uh, uh, digital audio broadcasting, and we can and we use that samples from the ITU from ITU recommendation. And uh, what is uh, what is interesting? Because that, uh, because we uh, we have the speech signal samples where we present the five different bit rates, yes, and we are use uh, OGG algorithm coding, and that signals are uh, transmitted over IP, over IP, not not only by BPL but over IP and we will see that uh, the test the some quality uh, what is the uh, uh, what is the point <coughs> uh, as a single session for the listener is was approximate to 20 minutes yes we have the 50 listener to the took our uh, and make the become the uh, study and the audio familiar with the test scenario. Yes, all all uh, all these people have the same uh, handphones. Yes, uh, by Dynamic Casting One Pro. That is the name of uh, the company. Yes, of that handphones and uh, the results. On, on figure I show you, 
uh, what is it, the result is what is the interest uh, because uh, the bid rates 8, 16 and 24 we are uh, qualified to analyze this because the higher bid rates uh, don't change it. and then show that is for 8, for eight kilobits the, that is the uh, mean opinion score parameter if that parameter is higher that uh, quality of uh, that experience quality of experience is better yes you see for uh, you, you see for the 8 kilobits per second is i know worse not good it's not good but for 16 kilobits per second it's good for 24 Better. That we'll see for we we doesn't need higher, yes? Because that is mm -hmm. thank you, Sean. Okay, we are uh, we're going to conclusion, I think. Uh, for that, you will see that the according to obtained results, a clear and understandable voice message can be provided for the bitter equal to 24 kilobits per second, and that is the the point. Uh, and uh, <coughs> why that uh, work is <coughs> important? Yes. You see, on that slide, we are using uh, now we are using the modems, the devices from the market. Next step is prepare and develop own integrated modem, yes, dedicated modem, where we can optimize <coughs> all algorithm, signal processing, demodulation, codings, uh, and uh, the voice compression inside, because for that work is very interesting for an uh, emergency situation in the mining because if we have emergency situation for example aircraft uh, uh, in <coughs> uh, underground underground we does we doesn't have uh, the communication using for example that type, that, that type of couplers i can uh, give uh, the the group of the uh, emergency group give that mo modems, for example, in the campsack, yes, and there can uh, build it, uh, build it uh, the emergency network communication. Next type, uh, next point of view, is uh, military for military, because uh, the soldiers need a very fast to create, very fast create new alternative way to communication. And I think that's it all. Okay, thank you. <coughs> and now uh, we will start the discussion. Uh, feel free to ask any questions, we have enough time. Maybe I should start the discussion. So, well, uh, quite interesting uh, idea. Uh, from my point of view, uh, the most interesting thing is the assessment of of quality of the voice data because it mm -hmm. was subjective and I wonder if there there are maybe some uh, objective tools for this purpose or not uh, and maybe there are some uh, dedicated uh, maybe recommended f by the ITU mm -hmm. data sets uh, similar like for yes. images maybe there are su such data sets for uh, for objective and subjective as well um, quality assessment of voice signals mm -hmm. and maybe uh, there is there could be possi the possibility to use a kind of automatic text rec uh, voice recognition mm -hmm. at the output of yes. your system yes of course we we want to uh, <coughs> prepare the testers from the some dedicated groups yeah like uh, like uh, the miners, for example, 
and but we we need a very big group to make that um, uh, make that research firstly yeah. and using something <coughs> uh, machine learning or uh, another algorithm yes to uh, make the automatic uh, 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 automatic <coughs> algorithm according for example the ITU recommendation yes okay. that is that that will be the next part that will be the next yeah. part of that work yeah. because now we we that uh, that work is uh, doesn't granted for any project yes yeah. that is the that is the That's hour sorry, yeah. yes we, uh, we, we, we doesn't we doesn't have finance now yeah. <laughs> but we will be applied yes to the national center uh, yeah. to uh, applicate for that work to O optimization, yes, er, and for uh, and yeah. uh, uh, for that uh, to make the automatization, yes, to uh, change the quality. And probably the database of, some, yes, some of signals. Yes, of, of course, of course, of subjective assessments. Mm -hmm. It will be a good idea. And uh, I'm wondering one more thing: why OGG? Because uh, there are uh, some uh, military standards for the voice compressions, mm -hmm. like. Uh, as far as I remember, FR one thousand fourteen, yes. FR one thousand fifteen. Probably you know them. Yes. Why haven't you used such now, approaches? Now we are using OGG firstly because it's very popular in uh, internet radio. Yeah. And that was the the first point. Okay. Uh, we we need to check <coughs> many codecs. Here we go. Yeah. RC plus. Yes, the military codecs. Sure. Uh, of course. That is the small part. That is the small part of the work. Very small. Yeah, but it's a good starting point. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, any other questions? If not, thank you once again. Thank you. And uh, we go to the second presentation. Um, the second presentation is entitled uh, "Automatic Detection of Heartbeats in Heart Sound Signals Using Deep Convolutional Neural Networks." Uh, the authors come uh, from Slovenia, and the presenter. Uh, will be uh, Mr. Grega Vlbancic. Yes, thank you, Mr. Please Chairman. The floor is yours. Thank you for the introduction. <coughs> so good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Grega Vlbancic, and today I'll present to you our paper titled Automatic Detection of Heartbeats in Heart Sound Signals Using Deep Convolutional Neural Networks. So uh, my presentation is structured from the following sections. Firstly, we'll go through the introduction and describe the problem which we are present uh, which we are addressing uh, then I'll present to our proposed method afterwards we take a look at the experiments we conducted and later on uh, see the results of the conducted experiment and finally I conclude my presentation with some uh, final thoughts and possible future work so uh, signal segmentation is considered to be one of the fundamental problems of digital signal processing in various information monitoring prediction and control systems in wide range of fields such as seismology astrology or medicine uh, observing the uh, uh, existent uh, segmentation methods we most commonly uh, they most commonly utilize more or less complex techniques to extract features from the signal such as frequency analysis or level transformations and later on perform some kind of classification over them uh, usually using some kind of more conventional classifiers such as decision trees uh, however these approaches especially in the field of the medicine have not performed very well uh, due to the interpatient variations of biomedical signals uh, leading to the inconsistent performance of such methods. So, uh, in the recent years, the hybrid segmentation methods uh, are utilizing the feature extraction capabilities of the deep convolutional neural networks uh, and are gaining the momentum. So, based on those observations, we set our main goals to uh, construct a fully automatic method utilizing deep CNNs for the feature extraction and classification task uh, without requiring any expert knowledge uh, and uh, while achieving the comparable uh, at least comparable results to hybrid methods utilizing the CNNs tackling the task of detecting the heartbeats from the highly viable sound signals. Mm -hmm. So our proposed method uh, primarily consists of the following three phases. So first phase is signal processing phase. The second is uh, building and uh, training the deep convolutional neural network and in the last phase post-processing uh, we are uh, calculating the exact location of predicted heart, uh, heartbeat. 
So uh, firstly, let's present the data set we used. We used a collection of annotated heartbeat sound signals initially prepared for classifying heart sounds challenge by Peter Bentley at all in 2011. <coughs> uh, the data set consists of uh, 21 sound clips uh, captured with the iStatoscope Pro, Pro iPhone application. It, it can be seen on the image. Uh, the clip length varies between 1 and 30 seconds uh, with a sampling rate of 44.1 kilohertz in a VAW uh, encoding. So recordings were captured in highly variable environments with excessive background noise uh, and, like I said, obtained using uh, the iStatoscope Pro iPhone application utilizing the iPhone's integrated microphone. So just to give you a bit of a perspective of it, what kind of uh, sound quality are we dealing with. And uh, on the image below are uh, marked points where the uh, integrated iF uh, iPhone microphone was located while recording the uh, heartbeat sound signals. Uh, so the first signal pre-processing uh, phase, uh, the first we did uh, from the raw hot, uh, heartbeat sound signals, uh, we performed the Z-score normalization. Uh, the A and B images are showing the unnormalized uh, sound signal and the C and D respectively showing the uh, signal after the uh, Z-score normalization. So uh, next step was splitting sound clips. Each sound clip was divided into multiple frames. Uh, we used the uh, non-sliding window algorithm. Uh, we set the window size to the 6,615 samples or uh, 150 milliseconds. Uh, the step size was uh, one third of the uh, window size with around 1,205 samples or 50 milliseconds. We picked this uh, window size based on the NCWM AM AI EC38 e and EC57 standards, which basically uh, describes if the detected heartbeat uh, location is in range of 150 milliseconds plus minus, uh, the detected uh, sound heartbeat is deemed to be accurate. So, and the image below is uh, representing uh, the sliding window algorithm which we used. Uh, so, here is the architecture of our convolutional neural network. So uh, we utilize the uh, not so standard uh, convolution one one dimensional convolutional layers. Uh, what's the difference between the classic two dimensional convolutional layer and this one dimensional con convolutional layer? Basically, they work in the same manner. The only difference is that one dimensional convolutional layer has the second dimension uh, equal to uh, one, and basically uh, the sliding uh, kernel computations, uh, conv convolutional comp computations, are only in horizontal direction. As in two-dimensional, the, the, they are sliding in two directions, so horizontally and vertically. So <coughs> at the input, uh, we are feeding our neural network with uh, those splitted uh, windows of uh, sound signal. Uh, and then we have two pairs of convolutional and maximization pooling layers, uh, followed by the fully connected mm -hmm. layer. And uh, at the end, we have output layer with single neuron uh, with a sigmoid activa activation function, which is uh, labeling uh, the feathered uh, uh, sound, uh, sound frames into the heartbeat or no heart heartbeat, basically one or zero. So uh, next phase was, was, or the last phase was the post-processing phase uh, where we determined the location, the exact samples in the heartbeat sound clip in which the heartbeat occurred. So from the CNN, uh, we obtained the predicted class, so heartbeat or no heartbeat, and the <coughs> also the prediction probabilities for each of the classified uh, frame. Uh, then we follow the, uh, this uh, three-step procedure where we, uh, where we have uh, the array of uh, predictions for each uh, frame, uh, and we uh, observe for the uh, occurrence or sequence of occurrences of uh, positively uh, classified uh, frames. Uh, so f from those uh, observances, we, we create so-called candidate ranges of splits. And from each uh, candidate ranges of splits, we select the one uh, frame which has the highest probability to uh, consist the heartbeat inside. Uh, and uh, the, uh, then we, from this uh, frame, we select the sample point in the middle of the split and set it as the uh, predicted location uh, of a heartbeat. So uh, in order to 
properly evaluate the performance of our proposed method, uh, we performed gold standard tenfold cross validation methodology. Uh, basically, we divided 21 sound recordings into 10 disjoint parts or faults. Uh, then we trained the CNN with a 9 out of 10 faults uh, and uh, test the performance on the remaining one fault. <coughs> So uh, then we repeat this process, uh, procedure t 10 times each time, uh, testing the performance with a different remaining fault. Uh, and uh, at the bottom are uh, the CNN training parameters. Uh, we utilize the efficient mini batch uh, uh, approach, uh, setting the batch size to 256 uh, sound clips. And uh, we train the CNN for the 150 epochs using the Adam optimizer with initial learning rate say to 10 on minus third. So given the specifics of the problem, we adapted the performance metric from the data set challenge in addition to the conventional classification metrics such as accuracy, specificity, sensitivity, and F1 score. So uh, the adopted uh, metric was average distance from the uh, real heartbeat locations, which is uh, denoted as delta K. Uh, so basically, it's uh, average distance uh, by the absolute uh, average distance by the absolute uh, distance of the real and predicted heartbeat. So the image below is representing uh, the uh, one whole sound clip. Uh, the blue uh, the blue color uh, is showing the sound signal, and the red vertical line is uh, the real uh, position or location of the heartbeat, and the green one is. Uh, the our predicted uh, heartbeat location. So uh, 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 in this image, all of the uh, predicted heartbeats are uh, in within uh, 150 milliseconds plus minus r range. So uh, here we are reporting the uh, average distance uh, metric as described in previous uh, slide. Uh, so uh, the average to uh, the, the delta total is representing the uh, sum of delta uh, metric over all sound clips, clips in each fold, and the delta average represents the uh, average uh, the distance over the all sound clips. Um, so what we can see that the minimum delta average distance is around three milliseconds. The maximum delta average is around five hundred and twenty-eight milliseconds, and the mean distance is around 186 milliseconds. Uh, when we're comparing the sum delta total with other methods, our method is better performing and on average around 80.5% of predicted heartbeats are, are in plus minus 150 millisecond range defined by ANSI WAMI standard. Uh, so uh, here is the classification performance of the proposed method. Uh, so the accuracy or each fold varies from the from 70 to 87 percent with a standard deviation of around 5 percent. Uh, our method achieved better balance of sensitivity versus specificity or F1 score while comparing to other methods uh, with a standard deviation of 9.37 percent. Um, so to conclude, uh, we have presented a new method for the automatic detection of heartbeats in hearts on signals using deep convolutional neural networks. It works in a fully automatic, straightforward manner does not require any pre-processing techniques to extract features from the signal or any medical domain knowledge. It is evaluated against the sound signals captured in highly viable environments with excessive background noise and compared to the existing methods evaluated on the same data set, our method outperforms other methods. So for future work, based on those promising results, we would like to extend our work to apply more advanced algorithms for the calculation of the predicted heartbeat locations uh, and we will also like to improve the classification performance of our CNN introducing different, different learning strategies as well as uh, utilize some hyperparameter optimization methods for fine tuning the CNN model. Uh, so thank you for your attention. If you have any questions, please. Okay. Thank you very much. And I will open the discussion. Okay. Uh, I have the questions. Um, the analyzing of that signal, uh, that was in the time domain, yes? Yes, time domain. Okay. And why uh, why do you uh, not uh, analyze this in the frequency domain, using Fourier analysis? 
Yeah, of course, uh, there are researchers that utilize the uh, frequency domain, mm -hmm. yeah, but uh, we have better results uh, uh, evaluating the uh, time domain, not, f uh, not frequency domain. Yeah, that was quite interesting. The previous. It's quite interesting, but, but uh, do you check only the amplitude or amplitude and phase? Uh, only amplitude. Ah, only amplitude. Yeah. But the, the phase is very interesting. Yeah. Because of course. Uh, if you if you analyze amplitude and phase, you have the all information about the signal in frequency domain. Yeah, of course. Mm -hmm. That could be the possible feature it's, too. Uh, it's, it's I think the uh, for example. Uh, Many time ago, a uh, man who is named uh, from Poland, Jan Zarzycki, uh, is invented the optimal, uh, op optimal filtration methods. Yes. That is the method that uh, we can create the filter with the adap uh, adaptive uh, transmutation parameters. And maybe to find uh, some distortion of your signals, if, because your signals is a uh, bit, yes? Yeah. If, if the parameters of the bit is changed, the transmutation must be changed. Maybe that method will be to find, uh, t tell us, uh, tell us uh, zero or one. Yeah. That we, we, have, we have some distortion <coughs> or not. Yeah, of course. Yeah, that could be a uh, possible future work. Yeah, thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Well, personally, I would say that it's a, the results are very surprising for me, yeah. personally, because, uh, well, in uh, much more complicated tasks, uh, analyzing the images using CNS, there are much better results. Yeah. So, personally, I wouldn't ever think about using such, not so deep CNN, because five no. years, it, it's, yeah, it's, it's quite a, standard. Not a yeah. classic approach from 1970s rather than yeah. deep CNS, so, uh, you know, 80% accuracy without any shape analysis, only finding the position of the signal is not very good. Yeah. Okay, I, I know that it could be just a starting point for, for uh, further research, research, but probably combining, maybe with frequency-based yeah. uh, analysis, uh, using more classical approach, probably you would go to more successful results, even for yeah. noisy signals. There are some tracking algorithms also uh, with with the data hidden in noise, so probably it could be even simplified. Yeah, uh, of course, uh, our uh, view or angle from which we are uh, seeing the problem is, uh, m me personally, I'm not the signal uh, expert or working on this yeah. area, so uh, our main goal was to find out if we can at least achieve comparable uh, results using the fully automatic uh, way, uh, utilizing the CNN uh, to detect some heartbeats. Yes, and uh, our, uh, we didn't uh, research so much into the uh, classical traditional methods, how we could uh, combine them into uh, our uh, approach to gain even better results. Our, our main uh, goal was to find out if the convolution network itself could be used to extract the or detect heartbeats from the uh, highly viable sound signal. So uh, if you have uh, maybe more uh, knowledge about the signal processing, uh, it would be quite useful to integrate those uh, features. We can try to discuss, but yeah. in general, I would say that this is the example of and I would say the sign of the times. People tend to use CNNs for everything, as it would be uh, a solution of each problem, and sometimes just a piece of knowledge related to the problem yeah. is much more useful than just using the CNN when you have no idea what is inside. Yeah, that's because true. You, you that's true. It's black box method. Yeah, yeah. Of it's each black layer. Box. Okay. Yeah, yeah. But nevertheless, but nevertheless, uh, we uh, we obtained the results which are which were better than uh, okay. the existing researchers. That was quite uh, interesting as well. So uh, probably yeah. the hybrid method in future will be will be the uh, one. Probably the hybrid will, will be the best. Yeah. yeah. Uh, gathering together bo both uh, best size. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It could be. Yeah. A Good classifier, for example. Yeah, of course. So after the proce pre yeah, processing, yeah, phasing, of course. Uh, even differentiation of the signal should help. Yeah. In the, as the input data. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Any other questions?
Okay, thank you once again. Thank you. And now we will go to the third presentation from Saudi Arabia. The presenter will be Siat Imtaza Haider, if I <laughs> pronounce this more or less properly. <laughs> the title of the paper will be Detection and Classification of Baseline Wonder Noise in ECG Signals <coughs> and Using Discrete Wavelet Transform and Decision Tree Classifier. Please. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Jim. 20 minutes. <laughs> yeah. uh, my name is uh, Saeed Etzahede, and today I I'm going to present uh, our research titled Detection and Classification of Baseline Wonder Noise in ECG Signals Using uh, Discrete Wavelet Transform and Decision Tree Classifier. Uh, the outline of my presentation is uh, as follows. I will start with uh, the motivation behind this work. Then I will give a brief introduction about the topic and after that I will discuss the proposed methodology followed by the results and the conclusion. Yeah. Now whenever we uh, acquire ECG signal or any uh, biomedical signal, usually there is a noise in the signal. So uh, in our work we are focusing on only the baseline wonder noise and uh, the reason is because it shares the same frequency as that of the ST segment of the ECG signal. So it is very important to estimate the baseline wonder noise prior to its removal. Uh, and uh, the ST segment provides the useful information uh, in different uh, clinical detection of heart diseases. So we can see, for example, uh, in this, we can see there is a large baseline wonder noise, and in this, uh, example uh, this is a baseline free signal so we should distinguish between baseline free signal and uh, baseline wonder noise signal uh, now if we have a good estimation of the baseline wonder noise we can prevent that segment from filtering and it will preserve the uh, actual features of the ecg signal now uh, uh, this figure actually it might not look very clear but uh, uh, if, for example, if there is a uh, noise-free signal and if we use a high-pass filtering, then it might slightly alleviate the ST segment of the ECG signal. Uh, it's not very clear, but uh, like usually uh, uh, when we uh, use the high-pass filtering, the ST segment is alleviated if there is no baseline wonder noise. So the important thing is that we should not uh, filter the segment of the ECG signal that is noise free. Now, you, uh, recently, like what people are doing, they have the ECG signal and they use the high pass filtering on the complete signal and uh, the, uh, the noise is removed. But if some part is noise free, then it will alter the shape of the signal. So, to uh, the main motivation is to identify the segments of the signal that have minimal or no baseline wonder noise and this identification process will assist in preserving the clinical relevance of baseline free segments by not applying any filtering technique. Uh, so the introduction about the topic, uh, baseline wonder is one of the major low frequency noises and the range is well below 0.8 hertz and uh, the main causes of this noise is patient movement, respiration, muscle contraction and electrode impedance change. So a care must be taken while eliminating this noise as the low frequency region uh, of the ECG spectrum is highly susceptible to distortion. Uh, the American Health Association, they recommend the cutoff frequency should not be more than 0 0.05 hertz uh, to preserve the possible distortion but this frequency can be relaxed up to 0.67 Hz as long as the linear phase of the filter is preserved. Now, uh, about the proposed methodology, uh, our main idea is to classify each segment of the ECG signal into minimal, moderate or large baseline wonder noise. And the proposed algorithm comprises of five stages. The first stage is that we have a complete signal which is of more than 30 minutes length. So we partition each signal into 5 seconds and then we perform the down sampling of the uh, each segment and after that we are doing the wavelet decomposition and reconstruction 
and uh, we are actually using the <coughs> approximate coefficient at level 6 using coe5 uh, mother wavelet transform uh, then we are doing the magnitude estimation of the baseline wind noise and finally we are constructing the decision tree classifier uh, so the first part is the segmentation uh, without overlapping the objective of the segmentation is to break the input signal into multiple fragments and analyze them separately uh, in the literature we have found that if you use a segment size of 5 seconds or 7 seconds the performance of EGC, ECG signal quality classification uh, results in a very good uh, uh, gets uh, good results uh, so we have considered a segment size of 5 seconds uh, next is the uh, down sampling uh, as we know that the most of the electric uh, ECG spectral power is located below 30 hertz so using the Nyquist sampling theorem we can down sample the data to 60 hertz or greater which is the desired frequency in our case and since we are already dealing with the low frequency noise so even some part of the uh, high fr uh, frequency is uh, like we can still uh, uh, use this uh, uh, 60 hertz uh, method so the database which we have used they have acquired the uh, signal uh, three at 360 hertz so we can down sample it by a factor of 5 which will result in 72 hertz which is still uh, li slightly larger than the uh, Nyquist criteria yeah uh, about the discrete wavelet transform uh, here's an equation which we can use to find the number of uh, the level of decomposition which we need and here fs is the new sampling frequency which is uh, 72 hertz in this case so it will result in six levels and uh, here we can see that uh, the approximate coefficient at level 6 is within the frequency range of 0 to 0 0.56 hertz which is still within the range of the uh, recommended uh, by the American Health Association so here we have a comparison between uh, various uh, uh, mother wavelet transforms we can see that uh, the coe 5 wavelet perf uh, outperforms the other uh, because it has uh, the lowest normalized sum of square residual and uh, the highest cross correlation uh, coefficient uh, about the yeah here we can see that this is the original sig uh, signal and this is the uh, uh, first segment of the signal and here is it is the down uh, sampled ECG signal with the, uh, the this dotted line shows the baseline estimation using COI 5 mother wavelet. Uh, for the estimation of magnitude of the baseline wonder noise, uh, we are using some basic mathematical equations. We are calculating the range of the approximate coefficient, then we are performing the mean centering mm -hmm. and uh, next we are perform we are uh, finding the standard deviation of the mean standard approximate coefficients and uh, after that we are estimating the magnitude of the baseline wonder noise by calculating the cumulative sum and finally we are calculating the area under the curve using the trapezoidal method and uh, this area under the curve is actually for the cumulative sum of approximate coefficients so for those segments that have minimal or no baseline wonder noise they should have a smaller value of area under the curve and those segments that have a high baseline wonder noise they will have a larger value of area under the curve and finally uh, we are constructing a decision tree classifier uh, for that we are using c4.5 decision tree algorithm using vecca data mining tool and there's an open source implementation of this method already available in VECA which is J48 and uh, this me method is based on the divide and conquer approach so that means it will select the main attribute and then it will partition the segment into subsets uh, for our classifier we are sorry for our classi yeah for our classifier we have main three attributes and uh, the first is the range, the second is the standard deviation of the mean centered coefficients and the last is the area under the curve of cumulative sum of squared mean centered approximate coefficients. 
Uh, we are using the MIT BIH Arrhythmia database, which is a very well known database. It has a total recordings of 48, and each recording is slightly larger than 30 minutes. And we are partitioning uh, each recording into five seconds non overlap segments. That means we have a total of 361 segments for each record. And uh, so that means for all the recordings, we have a total of 17,328 segments. For the training purpose, we are using the uh, data set of 36 uh, patients, 36 recordings. And for the test purpose, we are using the 12 ECG recordings. Uh, here is the parameters gain, gain ratio, which is uh, for the decision tree classifier. And here we can see that area under the curve, it has a maximum gain ratio. So that means the uh, decision tree classifier select this attribute as the parent attribute and then it will do the uh, classification. So here is the constructed decision tree classifier. We can see that the area under the curve is selected as a parent attribute and then the uh, tree is made. Yeah. So this is the complete proposed uh, methodology. So we have a um, we have a ECG signal record and we are partitioning it into five seconds uh, non-overlap sampling. Then we are down sampling the se uh, each segment. Then we are extracting the approximate coefficient at level six. And uh, we are doing a mean centering, finding the standard deviation of the mean centered approximate coefficients. Next we are finding the cumulative sum and based on that we are calculating the area under the curve. So these three features, the range, standard deviation, and area under the curve, they are going uh, <coughs> for the classifier. And we are using 36 recordings for the training purpose and the 12 records for the test purpose. Uh, yeah, so 48 records, the sampling frequency is 360 hertz. And uh, each record is slightly longer than 30 minutes. And there are 361 segments for each record. So here we can see the results like for example for this MIT Arrhythmia database record number 205. This is the segment number 5 and uh, uh, here we can see that uh, the baseline uh, noise there, there is an offset so we can simply remove the offset by mean centering but we do not need to uh, filter this kind of signal because uh, it has a very low baseline wonder noise and we can see that here we have a large baseline wonder noise and the area for this kind of segment is around more than 6500 but for a low baseline wonder noise the area is uh, around 28 yeah here we can see that for the complete uh, recording of uh, 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 recording number 123 uh, the segment number 22 it has a maximum range and the maximum area under the curve so that means in this complete recording segment number 2 has the maximum baseline when the noise similarly for this recording we can see that the segment number 221 it has a maximum range and maximum area under the curve so that means this uh, segment has the maximum baseline when the noise <coughs> for the test purpose, uh, we are considering two recordings and the, there are three adjacent segments and this is the range, standard deviation and area under the curve for these three uh, uh, segments. So in the next slide we will see uh, record number 123 and there are three consecutive segments here. Now this is the segment, uh, if we look at this figure we can see that uh, there is a very small baseline wonder noise, then we have a very large baseline wonder noise, and then we have a uh, slight uh, baseline wonder noise, but we cannot say that this is a baseline free signal. So by applying our uh, method, we can see that uh, it has found that this is a minimal baseline wonder segment, this is a large baseline wonder segment, and this is a moderate baseline wonder segment. <coughs> So this is a confusion matrix for the test data. Uh, we can see that there are still some uh, inaccurate uh, predictions and uh, 
uh, we can see that there are still uh, many segments that have a large baseline wonder noise but still there are some segments which have uh, low baseline wonder noise and these uh, uh, we should make sure that we should not filter these kind of segments uh, this is the class wise <coughs> sorry this is a class wise performance of the classifier and uh, we can see that the sensitivity for the minimal is around 92 percent and for the moderate and large it is uh, around 99.5 percent and the uh, accuracy is around 99 percent for the minimal 98.9 percent for the moderate and around 99 percent for the large uh, so in conclusion we have achieved uh, high accuracy in identifying the minimal, moderate and large baseline wonder segments and uh, the proposed method can possibly be used in devising an algorithm to optimize the baseline wonder removal problem uh, and in future we can develop a selective filtering method and uh, this work can serve as a pre-processing stage and once we know that which segments we have to filter and which segments we have to uh, like not filter then using this technique we can simply achieve the uh, better accuracy because we will not be filtering the part of the segments that is baseline free and we will be only focusing on the segments that are baseline one that have baseline wonder noise and we will be achieving the better trade-off between accuracy and computational cost so that's the end of my presentation, and if you have any questions, I would be happy to answer. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. So, I will start the discussion. Feel free to ask. Okay. I have a question. <coughs> you are using samples from the MIT database. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Tell me, uh, what part of the time yes, that, that, uh, that samples uh, is prepared? Uh, sorry, can you repeat? From, uh, from what part of the time? Yeah, is, yeah. Uh, that, that, that is the probes, for example, the samples from uh, this year, second no, year. It's actually it's a very, very old database. This is a very renowned okay. database. And now, the technique of the measure is changing. Mm -hmm. If you have, for example, analog devices uh, have developed the new, the new type of uh, analog to digital and digital to analog converters, when uh, many effects, what you have of that uh, samples of that probes, are eliminated. Okay. If you if you now uh, make, for example, some test using uh, <coughs> the modern hardware, modern hardware, you have, I think, uh, better results. Because many effects what they are you already have, removed. Yes, that that distortions yeah, yeah. and then there will be eliminate uh, in the hardware. Okay. Yeah. So this is a good. Mm -hmm. yes. Okay. So it was just a remark. Mm -hmm. okay. So I, I would have another one because I wonder why <coughs> why haven't you compared your approach based on wavelets? Uh, of course, there, there were the Debeche wavelets and so on. Uh, could be Har or some others. Doesn't matter. <coughs> Maybe Mexican hat. But uh, you haven't used Fourier analysis, and it would be probably a more natural way to 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 analyze such signals than the wavelets. So, what would be the results? Have, do you have any initial results using Fourier analysis, or you just take wavelets and? Everything is fine. Yeah, actually, we only use the wavelets. We didn't look at the Fourier transform, but uh, like surprising. <laughs> yeah, but we haven't used the Fourier, but we directly use the uh, wavelet transform, and we did the comparison between the wavelet transforms, and we selected the best wavelet. Uh, from okay, but uh, you know, there is a chance that using. Fourier analysis, you can get just better results yeah. without wavelets. So it's first thing that you, 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 yeah, you should it check, in my opinion. Yeah. I always wonder about the name of the sampling theorem. It's, it is Nyquist or Shannon. Maybe uh, Nyquist is rather frequency, but it doesn't matter. Maybe there are. Totally Nyquist and Shannon. Yeah. 
Okay, they're equivalent. So, any other questions? If not, let's thank once again. Thank you so much. And uh, the fourth presentation is missing, unfortunately. Uh, we will have no presentation from uh, India. Uh, but we will have the fifth presentation. The authors are missing <coughs> as well, but we have the substitution, uh, probably. And uh, the title of the paper is Extraction of Novel Features Based on Histograms on of MFCCs Used in Emotion Classification from Generated Original Speech Data Set. Uh, so another paper about the voice signals. Uh, the authors are Muhammad Pakirek, Mahir Atmi, Salman Kulac and Umut Ulutak from Turkey and uh, the substituting presenter should present yeah. yourself. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Hello everyone. Uh, I am Osman from uh, Turkey. Actually I am not an uh, original presenter uh, in this presentation. Uh, Mohammed, I'm sorry. Uh, Mohammed uh, was the <coughs> presenter, but he uh, couldn't come to here because of some problems. Uh, Mohammed and I uh, are student in uh, our PhD student in uh, same university, and uh, we have uh, same supervisor Salman Kulaj. Uh, they are included in the paper, <coughs> but I didn't, uh, so I don't have information actually about uh, this presentation. Uh, because of this, uh, I will not take any questions from sure. you. But uh, if you have questions or suggestions uh, for this, uh, I request that you send an em email uh, to authors. Uh, an email address uh, was given uh, at the end of the presentation, by the way. Yes, uh, talk about the uh, study. I think, as I know, this study is about uh, actually prediction, uh, emotion prediction uh, from uh, speech uh, signals, as I know. Uh, the presentation is outline of the uh, eighth section. First, introduction and what's the problem and motivation and uh, solution uh, and how the experimental workflow uh, and what's the databases, Berlin and Powell databases. Uh, and their known feature, what's the their known features, uh, and experimental results and conclusions. Human and computer inter interaction systems uh, have been drawing attention increasingly in actually recent years. Uh, understanding the emotions of humans plays a significant role uh, in these systems. Uh, in this study, there are two main contributions. Uh, one is their novel feature, which is MFCCs, malfrequency spectrum uh, coefficients, uh, representation based on their histograms. Other contribution uh, is Pell speech data, whose emissions are labeled and uh, cross-checked by PhD students. What's the problem? Problem planching uh, claims that emotions are categorized as the primary emotion and the secondary emotions. Uh, primary emotions, anger, fear, sadness, disgust, surprise, anticipation, trust, uh, and joy are fundamental basis for secondary. Uh, what's the motivation? In the study, emotion of sadness, happiness, and natural are aimed to be recognized by their design systems. Develop a database to compare with existing database and test their framework. framework. What's the solution? Solution, their null MFCC based coefficients are utilized as feature, as feature vectors. SVM, support vector machine, with cross-validation are employed as a classifier because of limited data. In the main part of uh, this solution, firstly, all data sets are acquired to calculate uh, the MFCCs for each individual file. Then the first, second and the third features of each file are calculated using MFCCs values for each element. The last one for solution Covariance matrix uh, and a label 
vector for output emission classes are generated by SVM. After uh, the SVM uh, analyzes, uh, accuracy and confusion matrices are calculated as a mean value of for all mm. items. Experimental workflow is uh, totally six steps. Uh, first, collect speech data, then uh, pre pre processes uh, speech data and extract uh, speech features, and the others separate training and test features, and tune classify on training features, and the last predict emotion on test feature. Yeah, this table shows that Perlin and Perl databases. Uh, these databases are composed uh, of audio speech data. Uh, table 2 shows the details of these two databases, including audio language and gender, emotion, uh, emotion type, type of speech. <laughs> uh, and type 3 uh, gives more details of how databases, <coughs> which is created in uh, this study. It's composed of uh, a variety of videos or the data. And let's uh, we can see the their known uh, features. Uh, instead of average of of, of MFCCs and uh, their first and second deriv derivative, they use more informative version of MFCCs using uh, their PDF and values shown as below. Uh, this novel feature uh, feature provides smaller size of data for histogram representations and requires less computational power. Their experimental uh, results, uh, table five, six, and uh, seven. Uh, table five for Berlin databases. Uh, table 6, Paul databases, and the last one is the combined databases of these results. These results in uh, first feature, average of MFCCs and their derivatives, second feature, their novel features, and the third feature is contact, first and second features. Uh, by the way, Berlin databases better than other scenarios uh, since fixed sentence and same environment is uh, used for people. Yes, it's conclusion. Uh, the its conclusion is about uh, five steps. The first, best results are achieved by the Berlin database compared to PAL database because the sentence for the speech in Berlin data are the same for each individual. Uh, and they are performed in the same framework, framework as well. Generated their own data set to build comprehensive uh, framework. Uh, due to the lack of abundant amount of data, uh, SVM outperforms uh, DNN. Uh, and according to the LIRD, uh, I think they uh, gave the references. Uh, their study has better results than average classification accuracy of SVM uh, for the speech emotion classification studies. Uh, and the last one, uh, thanks to their novel features based on histogram of MFCCs, uh, they have obtained better results from the uh, experiments. Uh, since distribution of all MFCCs values uh, has so much more information uh, to represent the emotion rather than using only average of MFCCs. Yes, all of this presentation uh, is enough. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, you can send uh, an email. Uh, these email addresses, uh, which is the original presenter. Okay, so Kay. thank you. Kay, thank you. Uh, maybe. If Probably there will be no questions uh, addressed to you, but maybe there will be some remarks during the discussion. Yeah. Uh, you said that you get better, well, not better, better result than other models, yes? Yeah. Can you evaluate how much better? Uh, but uh, I didn't uh, say anything. Uh, I didn't include this uh, paper. Uh, 
uh, I just uh, present instead of. Uh, you don't know anything about it. Yeah. Uh, okay. I, but I would have some remarks, and maybe you could forward them to the authors. Maybe they will be helpful. Maybe not, uh, because uh, well, I, I know that. Uh, probably uh, only three states of emotions are recognized because of the databases used yeah, yeah. and Berlin looks uh, simpler yeah. and the results are better for Berlin the database so it's obvious but uh, uh, you know uh, I wonder if there are uh, only such two databases available maybe there are some uh, newer better databases including more emotions and it maybe it maybe. could be the, the next step yeah. but uh, there are some works, even at my faculty, uh, uh, I was reviewing the PhD thesis related uh, to uh, emotion recognition uh, using video, video image analysis and modeling of emotions on human faces. So maybe a good idea will be the combination of recognition of the emotions from the speech with the video data. So maybe such a joint hybrid uh, idea will be uh, very good for the PhD or, or some other better articles, maybe joint with yeah. someone. So, so maybe this would be uh, the most significant uh, yeah. value from, yeah. from this discussion, but maybe there is another remark. Another remark is, uh, uh, is the database uh, from Paul Ekman. Paul Ekman is, uh, that is the theory of m micro expression of face mm. and uh, that is the correlation with micro expression <coughs> and uh, what, what we now talking, yes? Yeah. Because we, uh, the, vo uh, the voice, the information uh, in many situations uh, is not um, Visible? Uh, yes, yeah. uh, it, it, it is not decorrelated, uh, yeah. not decorrelated with what uh, we have the expression of the face. Yeah, if you are a good actor, right. sometimes yeah. uh, mm -hmm. you you can try to do this. Yeah, mm -hmm. so, so so the, the voice is a bit different than very people. Many people who uh, who lying, yeah. many people who lying. That that is uh, that situation. That's. Uh, uh, the emotion on the face is uh, not correlated, is um, uh, inverted correlation. Yeah. It is the inverted correlation. So maybe the police will be interested yeah. in yeah. this. <laughs> yeah, okay. So, thank you once again for the presentation. And as far, as far as I know, the session is closed, so thank you for active participation in this um, session. The next one will be uh, in at 11 a.m. The chairman will be Lina Svilainis and now we should 45 minutes for a coffee. Thank you. Thank you.